Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today I've been excited all week, month. We have Craig Clemens who's one of the top copywriters and direct response marketers. Now a little bit about Craig. He got his start writing copy for Double Your Dating which grew to over $20 million per year. Since then he's co-founded three new eight-figure businesses in the last five years in the diverse industries of nutrition, cosmetics, and dating advice. His most recent successful sales promotion brought in over one million dollars in sales in the first two days and it's off of cold banner traffic, no launch, no affiliates, and I can't ask about it because it's still running, so don't uh, don't get upset if I uh, don't ask questions about it. I may ask anyways. Um, he's also a co-star in a reality show, Lucky Bastards, which follows his life along with five other entrepreneurs in New York City. Craig, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Craig, since it's Inspired Insider, I ask, um, what's been, you know, obviously you've had tons of success. What's been a low moment? And then what you thought about to kind of push through those tough times? Um, business, personal, both. What? Uh, yeah, whatever comes to mind is a, is a low moment. Um, let business me see. Business and or personal. Maybe I can give you one of each. Yeah, go ahead. Um, oh well, the recession was an interesting time. So um, the recession uh, hit. Double your dating while I was working there. And by this time it was double your dating. We had catch and keep him for women. We had the altitude brand and um, a lot of layoffs were made myself included. And I was like, Oh, that's fine because my affiliate marketing business was cranking at the time. You know, I was making way more money doing the affiliate marketing than I, I was getting uh, salary with Evan. So I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know, and I had this business going with my, my two brothers. Um, and this is like 2008. And then uh, slowly, as the economy started showing up, people stopped. Even though we weren't selling the products, they weren't buying on off our affiliate links. You know, the people just started tightening up their wallets, and the money just stopped coming in. And I had to move out of my mansion in the hills and like sell my Porsche and shit like that, and move into an apartment with my brother. And I was like, "Fuck, that was it. It's over." <laughs> you know, like it's tough. Those are some good times, but who knows what's going to happen next. And this is when like things were getting really scary, and you know my brother's a former marine and all that, and I'm like, okay, dude, um, I want you to teach me how to use a gun, <laughs> you know, it's like survival type. Yeah, of... yeah, like this could get crazy. That was when Neil Strauss's book came out. That was uh, called like you know uh, what was it, Rescue 911 or some shit like that. I don't know. It was a crazy time, and um, we that was when we met our other business partner Josh, and Josh. Uh, have seen me uh, uh, speak at uh, one of Eben's uh, altitude programs, and he just found me for consulting. And he had this idea for a new product, and he came out to LA. And this, he was super driven. Um, he'd had the same thing happen to him. Um, he had made a lot of money in commercial real estate, and then he had his gym going and all that, and then like uh, you know did a few uh, bad. Um, internet deals trying to launch a book uh, like kind of like a Tony Robbins type of thing because Josh is an amazing story that hopefully we'll get to tell one day about how he uh, beat Crohn's disease and is just really doing fantastic um, but this guy was just so fired up and gun ho he's like okay I want to do this you know let's let's make this new thing and all this and he had all this energy and excitement and we're just like fuck it we, you know might as well and like during the time I was trying to take on I was taking on copy uh, side clients just to like pick, keep the lights on you know like just while we were like cranking up this new uh, uh, company um, but his energy got us through that you know and it just uh, was a good lesson for me showing that like you know just because like times are down it could be an opportunity for success if you look at it in the right way you know because you can build something and get it going so that's a business one yeah I, I remember reading your posts like when I was researching this and um you have this great video of a song being played that really means a lot to you. And um, it starts off, I've had a crazy effing year, some of the highest highs of my life and some of the pretty low lows of my life. You know what I'm talking about? That was the got dumped year. Was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the way that started off, um, just a sec, I see the uh, little battery. It's uh, how to save a perfect moment was, right. the, uh, was the post. 
Um, so, uh, okay, my, I'm, I'm making the battery on my computer is giving, is giving me that like beep, 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 but okay. Well, we no, have, I know you have another appointment in a few minutes anyway, so. Um. Good closer though. It was a pretty shitty time. <laughs> um, so I was. Because you're pretty open. You know, like no, most people, like if you read that post, most people would not share any of that with someone close to them, let alone put it in a blog post. Like you talked about some pretty personal stuff, um, like from relationships to parents to whatever in that post. Yeah, uh, and I, I guess, uh, and I'll give you specifics. I don't, I don't care. Um, you know, it's probably good to, now. <laughs> I didn't want to share those at the time, but um, so yeah, I, I um, had met this girl. I was totally in love. I thought I was going to marry this girl, and um. You know, s- silly me uh, thinking as a man, I was like, well, I'm going to marry this girl, so I'm probably not going to be hooking up with any other girls ever again. And this, this logic is so, just sounds so crazy to me, even like saying it, like, how was I ever thinking this logic, right? But, but you know, I was. Uh, and I was thinking, well, before I make it official with her, I need to, like, you know, go on a boy's trip and, like, you know, have my last summer of, like, partying and meeting other girls because I'm going to marry this girl and then that's going to be it, you know? So um, I never actually, like, made the move to become exclusive with her. And, you know, I'm kind of, like, waiting until summer's over, you know, because I uh, a year before I had – then in the Ukraine partying with a friend and we had decided that we were going to go back and like do it again the next summer. And we had planned this out and he had gotten a house there in Odessa, Ukraine. And so I'm like, okay, this is going to be like my, my last hurrah summer, you know, so I'm going to do this up Odessa. So I go and um, I'm dating this girl and I'm like, you know, Hey, uh, you know, I'm just going, uh, we were in Europe together and then she went home and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go visit, visit, have my uh, boys trip now. And then I'll come back and everything will be fine. So go on the boys' trip. Um, everything's going well. There's this club there called Club Aviza. It's this crazy club there. And, uh, you know, like dancing performers, like a thousand people inside. And we went there like two or three nights in a row. Um, everything was fun and good. Um, but then uh, the last night was a Saturday night. And my friend had been out there for a month, my uh, friend Richard. And he didn't want to go out. And I'm like, dude, it's my last night in Europe. I got to go out. You know, I'm not going to stay home. And he's like, well, maybe Alex will want to go out. So Alex was his best friend. And Alex was like, yeah, I'll go out. But Alex was had a, a girl he'd been seeing. So it was. So we went out, the three of us. And like at midnight, Alex is like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm bored, Craig. We're just going to go home. You know, and I'm like, man, really? It's midnight. And he's like, yeah, you know, uh, we're over it. And I met a, made a few other friends in the city. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to hang out. So they left. So. Uh, I'm hanging, um, keep on drinking pretty soon. It's like four or 5 AM. You know, I, I was hanging around with a couple guys that I knew from previous summers or whatever, but like, then I, I got lost and, and, uh, I'm pretty hammered at this point. And this dude comes up to me, this like, seemed like he was like 19, 20 years old. And he's like, man, you're a legend, man. I seen you, you know, talking to these girls, like, let's hang out. I'm like, okay. So he and I start doing shots and shit, you know, we're having a great time. Pretty soon, like 6 a.m. rolls around. He's like, oh, I'm going to take you to a party with the locals. You know, let's, let's go after party. I'm like, okay, cool. So we start walking and there's this like main drag at the end of it's this parking lot. We come out to the parking lot and there's uh, four, four of his buddies there. He's like, hey, Craig, you know, these are my friends. I'm like, what's up, guys? And the guys grab me. And I'm like. You know, I try to try to escape, and I and like these guys are like fucking pulling me, and I go to run, and they like jump on me and start fucking pounding me and stuff, and I'm like, holy shit! And the guy just like the original dude just like walks away laughing, and I'm like, what the fuck, bro? You know, how could you do this? And the guys pick me up, and I'm like, these dudes are, are pretty good sized, and I'm a pretty good sized dude myself, but like there was no movement. They throw me in the back of this car, and we start driving, and I'm like, oh fuck! Oh my god! I'm here. So. um and this is like the one point in my life where I was just sitting in the back seat. I got a guy on each side of me. I got two guys in the front. I'm sitting there. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm completely fucked. And so, you know, I was, I was so drunk. It's embarrassing that I don't even remember the exact details of the story. What I think happened is I think I got my phone and I knew this guy, Eugene, who had found our house there. 
and he was from Odessa, and I was like, hey guys, I'm not just some asshole tourist, like I'm here with local friends, we can call my friends and you can talk to them, it's okay. So I called up my friend Eugene, and I was like, here, call, talk to Eugene, and I gave it to the guy in Shotgun, it was the only guy that spoke a little bit of English, and he talks to Eugene in Russian, I don't know what he's saying or anything, and then like, I opened up my wallet, and I had like 400 euros in there, I'm like, hey man, just, you know, take the, keep the phone and just take my 400 euros, just, just let me go. And they just like pulled her aside and just threw me out of the car. Um, and I had to find my way home. Like, oh my like, God. Sun's coming out. I had to like, you know, go down to the main strip. I'm like asking, Does anyone speak English? Can someone walk me home? And I found, finally found some guy to walk me home. It took us an hour and a half to get to the house. And I gave him like my, I woke up my roommate, gave him like $800 Ukraine. It was like 80 bucks for walking me home. Um, and then, uh, like then I, like my, my, uh, girl at the time, um, you know, when she hears about that going down, it was just like eye opening to her. Like, you know, what the fuck am I doing? Like dating this dude that's like going doing this crazy stuff, hasn't even talked about making a commitment to me. We've been dating like four or five months, you know, like this is stupid. I'm out. And I oh. was like, oh no, wait, I'm in love with you. I'm glad we're getting married and stuff. And, you know, and she's like, too little, too late. And like, you know, and I was like, she's right. <laughs> like, this is dumb. Uh, I was just making all the wrong moves, and I definitely had that coming. Um, and it was it was a big bummer. But on the upside, it some I guess sometimes it takes something like that to realize that one I had a like crazy binge drinking problem. I quit drinking hard alcohol since then. Now I only drink beer and wine. It's been a lot better for me. Um, two, I just had all kinds of like confused logic about uh, you know dating and relationships. So that like gotten me to like wake the fuck up there and realize that you know you gotta uh man up if you want to make something work and like you know you can't try to like still be a fucking mm. uh same old pizza delivery guy around you know yeah um and um yeah you know i just, mm. just got me on, on track that's crazy craig that's crazy this yeah. needs to be an email sequence like <laughs> or something because <laughs> i would have just been you know, but because it's like a perfect copy. You go away from the girl and you go into this whole story on the Ukraine. Um, last question. I know you have to go to your appointment. Is what about? I know we talked about the little point. What has been the proudest moment for you? Um, you know, I feel pretty proud sitting here telling that story, knowing I'm not that same guy anymore. That. Uh, was doing that dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, yeah. I have to say, I've come a lot, uh, a long way in those past few years, and I, I learned the lessons, and you know, I, I feel like a different person now, and that feels good. Um, Business wise, you know, it's always nice to write a great promotion, but I think more so, like my brothers and my business partner Josh and I have, mm. have built this team, and it makes me really happy when I get a letter from one of our staff saying, "Hey, Craig, I just want you to know I'm really thankful for the opportunity to work here and learning so much and excited about business because that's how I felt when I was working with Eben. So when mm. I get those letters like that from people on our team, yeah. that is uh, it's such a great feeling for me. Yeah. Craig, where should people? Thank you so much. It's been hugely valuable. Where should people reach out to you to say thank you or check out whatever you're doing? Uh, I. Um, been talking about doing a personal blog forever. Someday it'll start. I got a few things up at CraigClemens.com. Um, you know, if you if you want me to write some more, please by all means tell me to get off my lazy ass and do it. <laughs> I would like to self motivate there. Uh, Instagram Craig R Clemens, um, and yeah, I guess that's it. Awesome, Craig. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Take care, Jerry. All right.